We just watched Exquisite Corpse. And then just prior to that, we saw Ruby Ray. And I don't even know why we've given this guy a, ma a mic, because I'm sure <laughs> you can hear him from everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely Steve. Thank you. Thank you. So, tell us about the inspiration behind Ruby Rain. Um, the inspiration first came in about um, 94. Um, it was during a, um, I was watching a film called Trauma by Dario Gento, and at the very end, the end track was a track called Ruby Rain. And when I heard the lyrics, I immediately thought for some reason of an arterial spray being the Ruby Rain. And then throughout the years, I'd, when I left school, it stuck in my mind. And then June, when the internet came out on YouTube, I managed to get hold of the track and listen to it. And just inspired all these ideas of death and the, the, the Black Love Assassin and things like that. So I developed from there. And um, for years, I'd write and wrote a different, in a different direction where I'd followed more group of characters. And then Ruby became the backseated character, which I didn't agree with because I thought Ruby should be the main <laughs> antagonist or villain um, and then I watched a film called Angst, um, a German film from 1980 and um, that because it was spray killer technically mm. I decided to kind of like use that as a template to do a short version of Ruby Rain so technically the short was like the first 17 minutes of the feature film which is technically just Angst condensed down um, Yeah, I hope that was fine and clear yeah that was fine and clear um, I, as soon as you sent me the link I said and I saw Ruby Rain yeah, I immediately started thinking this has to somehow relate to trauma. Yeah. And sure enough, it did. And yeah. then, of course, we start watching it, and you've got this um, blood and black lace type character yeah. sneaking around. Tell us about your passion for Jowlo. Um, the Jowlo um, came about when I was like being growing up, and you're um, at the video shop, and you're getting all these videos out, and you're seeing all these uh, crazy uh, European movies from the 70s, and um, one was like Deep Red, and having that kind of like the, the jealous stick of the black glove, the truby hat, was just something fascinating about it. And having all these other um, movie monsters getting created, like the Freddies and Jason, there's no way you can compare to that. So you could, you find something that you can actually have something that is like humanized, but you can, anybody can have that look. It's just now it's like a Ruby Rain look, you know what I mean? It looks like that kind of truby hat and black gloves. Um, I don't know, it's hard, it's just having that kind of enigma behind not being able to see what that guy's doing behind the mask. That's why he wears the table with his mouth, so you don't see what he's doing, if he's smiling, if he's upset, or if he doesn't make a sound, things like that. Um, I just find it fascinating how he can just dissolve into the darkness and come out of the darkness. Um, yeah, I think it's just it's more of a fascination with the outcome. Not, not a fetish or anything with the leather stuff, it's, I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just love the aesthetic. I, I, you know, we all talked about this and we all said, for all of us, the scene that really, really stands out, and I'm sure our audience will agree, is the scene with the cherry blossom. Yeah. I mean, how amazing was that shot? And you said, didn't you say to me it was like a fluke or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, that was it. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, if there's any fluke, it's the thing. The more when you, you turn up somewhere and they say, like, God's looking down, and he'll give, give you them blessings. And on the first day, it was just completely sunny when we shot all the stuff in the forest. And then the second day, it was really windy in the back garden. And we're just seeing all these blossoms and thinking, whoa, I've got to use that. You've got to use it now, yeah. you know what I mean? Because it could stop. And then we did it. It just kept going and it just kept falling down. And obviously, the low angle with the slow mo. And even though now I said that, I was like, the rush through my body, I was like, whoa. <laughs> Not like that, you know what I mean? And, you know, for that, I, and I know, sorry if I sound like I'm being patronising, but for those of you that don't know, a cherry blossom, it blooms, and you've almost got like a three week window, haven't yeah. you? Um, uh, you know, you don't get what you want out of that scene. So yeah. people that, that literally want that scene, it's almost impossible to get. You've got to kind of manage that three week window, and a cherry blossom will bloom when exactly it wants to bloom and its leaves will drop whenever it wants to drop so by a happy accident yeah. or whatever you know top marks to you no, because no, you've got that that's amazing yeah it's, i think that's the thing when you when you're doing so when you're filming a location you've got to hear them risk if you see someone just do it you know what i mean like the big times when you're filming film in the forest and you have like the sun coming through the trees and shit and then obviously you, and you've got the mist rise and the early morning mist You've got to take them moments, and I think that's the, what makes the film good when you get them visual, because they're happy mistakes. Yeah. And they, they, they're brilliant to find them and experience them. So you've been making quite a few sort of low-budget indie films for a while. 
I, I haven't watched any of them yet, but in, <laughs> in, cool. in, in February, when we met up, <laughs> we, I took a, a, a whole stack off you. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about your past work, and let's t- tell us a little bit about what you think is going to be next for you. Um, well, my past work, um, the genesis of it's like kind of like, um, basically, when I left school, didn't have any congregations, got books, got things, got loads of actors getting made movies, fell apart, and then I got to the point where I was tr- tr- not, I was getting made in a jail um, in two, like 2000, um, and it was just not going nowhere, and I met these really terrible actors that were really bad, they just messed up lines all the time, so what I decided to do was just work with them for four years and make loads of films with them, because they didn't argue, they just allowed us to do anything I wanted, so they became my uh, university because I could experiment with them, um, I would light them, manipulate, exploit them, and it, it, it didn't care really. No, it sounds nasty, but you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, I went through that, and then I kind of like um, again, I'm open to any genre. I think like again, film doesn't, film doesn't have really like a, a thingy for me. It's like it's all about the the, the characters, and I think. Um, then I moved on from that to do more serious stuff again, because that's what I want to do. Obviously, I like making bad movies, but also you want to make good movies as yeah. well, you know what I mean? But future-wise, um, I just want to keep on making movies and make more people who want to make movies and help anybody I can to make movies and... Um, I, 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 um, I keep seeing this all the time, like popping up on social media. I've got to ask, <laughs> because the concept of this sounds bonkers. Tell us about uh, the gorilla movie. Oh, Klaus. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, well, Klaus, um, basically, that started out as a, um, basically just a kill ear movie. A couple of teens in the forest getting chased by an ear, and then uh, 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 one of the actors dropped out, so I rewrote it for him. an actor. He dropped out, so I rewrote it for him. an actress, and then she stuck with it. And then, because it wasn't um, action enough, I decided I had loads of mercenaries. Uh, ninjas, and uh, before I knew it, my plot was just a, uh, just a cluster bomb because I had kind of two narratives running together. But through happenstance and people being honest with feedback and listening to feedback, I kind of like managed to cohesively put it together and create like hopefully a 60 minute thrill ride that's just ninjas and apes and mercenaries fighting. So we, we're, back, we're back to Thursday night and the ninja, the protector chat, aren't we? Whoa, is that getting short? No, no, you and I, we were talking about Ninja the Pope. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like stuff that's oh. been cobbled together. Yeah, yeah, I uh, Do you know what? Yeah. Do you know what? What? I will organise a screening here of Ninja the Protector for you. Wait! Anyway, on a completely different subject, you've got a lot of friends out there and you're going to have a lot of people that are going to ask you lots of questions, I hope. So. Don't leave us in suspense. Come on, let's get this guy some questions. Hi, uh, my name is James. Uh, hi, Steve. Yeah, hey, James. Yeah, I've got one question for you. Uh, I've heard on the grapevine that um, uh, someone's remaking a film called uh, that was Home from the Bullets. I'd like to know uh, what you think about it. Uh, your film being remade, uh, reimagined. Uh, I've heard. Oh yeah. Um, well, we first like feature. Uh, I released them um, all the bullets, and um, there's a company in. Burn called Mike Raven and the remaking it, which to me was just mind blowing. Have you film remade? Do you know what I mean? And it's like some people don't get that in Korea, you know what I mean? That was just so on it, and the, the guy after Baz Hadja is a genius. So that's just too exciting. That imagine that just happening with just random people, yeah. No, honestly, that, it blows that, my mind. Unbelievable. Anyway, uh, we got another question out there, okay? So, this master, this master assassin. What stopped him from um, taking out his girlfriend in the beginning of the beginning of the short film? Um, it was a reaction, because um, in his head he was like, right, I'm going to give her the ring, she's going to be happy, she'll put her makeup on, I'm going to come along and stab her in the back. But obviously we're both standing up and screaming, it was that reaction, and then that's, again, that's from Hans. I mean, I don't know if, if you've seen Hans, but uh, it's actually on YouTube. Um, but there's a similar scene in that, where the killer has the same reaction, when in his head he thinks it's going to go one way, but because it doesn't, he kind of like, Panics, so he runs off, but he still knows, and as an invoice over, he kind of says, like, doesn't matter if I mess up with the, the girlfriend, I've still got to carry on doing my parents it, and then carry on with where we go on is. Um, is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're a filmmaker. No, that's good, I'm just nervous, you know, sorry. Have we got any other questions out there? I really like the uh, soundtrack in the film. I was wondering if you always plan to do it fast-paced, and what your inspiration was to it. Well, the soundtrack, um, 
Well, every time I, uh, whenever I do anything, I always create like that's what I mean. I, I'm saying with them as mate as the guy like you mate. It's like temp soundtrack, don't you? Um, and I, I, I did. I would like one composer, but I went on um, a site called Soundscape, and I spent like a few weeks just going through every genre to find everything. And you shouldn't find a note. Sometimes you know within that note if that's going to fit that specific scene. And lucky enough, I did find the pieces of track. So there was no specific inspiration apart from kind of like. Um, that Euro synth music that would have come from the 80s, which would have been more what I used for the temp tracks, um, like Brian Boswell or Claudia Simonetti type stuff. But uh, yeah, I started more use like what I could get access to. I was going to ask um, if you could work with any actor alive or dead, who would it be? Any actor? Yeah, anyone. Alive or dead? <coughs> um, can I have two? <laughs> Go on. Of course. Uh, that would be uh, Frank Ronero. And uh, Wings Hauser. Hey. Yeah, Wings for life. <laughs> <laughs> Have we got any other questions out there? So, on this subject, tell us five of your favourite films. Uh, Midnight Cowboy, um, Total Hero, uh, Eighth Day, um, Hard World, and um, Suspiria. Um, so, listen, we put you under enough pressure. I'll screw you any time. But, uh, I know... Uh, any, any. No, no, I'll give my sitting in the sweat like mother... <laughs> I'm sure our audience really enjoyed Groovy Ray. No, thank, no, thanks for coming. That and um, I'm sure you can uh, get their attention again in the near future with something else. No, 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 cool, I'm working on it. And um, if you are making a film at any point in time, Steve is your man because he will be Anyone? your most faithful supporter. Uh, you know, a, a real genuine guy. Uh, so Thank give you. him a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to Spencer and all of everybody here who's helped us get all everybody together and escape the uh, crazy world that we're living in and experience some crazy cinema and that. And I really appreciate it. Thanks again. Thanks for coming. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you.